Hello everybody, it's Dave Fernape here with the weekly recap. Today, I'm with a co-host, his name is... Hey guys, my name is Matty Brolic. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing pretty well, I'm excited to be here, how are you? I'm doing great, thanks for asking. So, this week was week one of the season, it all started up season three, and we're really excited. So... Starting up with the, um, we're just going to be talking about the scores for each game. If you haven't seen the games, I urge you to go check out everybody's channel in the NPL. Links will be down in the description. Um, check out all the games before you watch this weekly recap, because I tell you, those are so exciting to watch. Um, so Portland and New York squared up first, and uh, Portland came out with a narrow 1-0 victory. Um... Gyarados at one point for New York looked like it was going to sweep, but um, Portland brought it back and able to get that 1-0 victory. Toronto and Atlanta actually had the they were the game of the week this this uh this week session. So they're the game of the week. So there's a there's a video about that. You guys can go check it out. Co-hosted by me and um, main announcer was Maddie. So you guys can check that out. Um, it was a very stally match, but it was super intense, and Toronto came out a 2-1 victory, which just boils down to 1-0. Um, Phoenix and Detroit played next. Uh, Cheese Boy played really, really good, and, um, brought away a 2-0 victory, so he had more room to breathe than that. He played very well and played safe. He could have gotten maybe a better score, but he played smart. He played safe knowing that Ashley, the coach of the Detroit Pincers, is a very smart person and could have could have um, done really well if she found some way to exploit something. So Cheese played safe and played well. Unfortunately, Chicago and Green Bay didn't get to play this week, but during week 11, they're going to make it up and upload it. So be sure... To be excited for that, that's just one thing that's going to happen on the week before the playoffs start. Um, and then Oakland came out playing extremely well, taking a 3-0 victory against Seattle. It wasn't an easy victory, but Oakland definitely played amazing to get that victory. Uh, Shout-outs to Richard, he did really good that battle. Um, New England versus San Antonio, another 3-0 victory. Um, New England, they... they played hard but unfortunately they they made some misplays San Antonio capitalized brought away a big victory and also countered the huge threats on New England really well is there anything you want to add uh yeah no you seem to sum that up pretty well all, all teams played pretty well this week and there were definitely some intense games but Oakland and San Antonio seemed to come out um the strongest by coming out and winning by pretty big differentials in 3-0. And as Dave mentioned before, the Toronto-Atlanta game was extremely intense. There was a Star War at the end, but watching up till that point, and uh, I guess just speeding up the Star War part, well, it was a really, really great game. Definitely deserving game of the week. But to all coaches, great job in week one. Good luck to you guys in the next coming weeks. And you definitely pleasure to watch all you guys play being it was my first week as an analyst in this league yeah and um there wasn't too much hacks at all there wasn't any like bad luck that really made a difference or mattered cough cough razor because he <laughs> he likes to hacks everybody and um so it was a it was a solid start to the season and also some players came out really strong um Obviously, everybody was looking at Infernape making an impact, and he definitely did, getting three kills in his first week. And um, he plays for Portland, so definitely, definitely a strong asset, and probably is going to get some more kills this season. Yeah, absolutely. Infernape came out hot. Uh, definitely a great Pokemon in this format. I, I feel like it always proves to be, no matter what, league you're watching, if you uh, see an Infernape, they just have so many options. They could do so many different things, and definitely a Pokemon to keep your eye out for, for any of the other coaches, because um, you never know what it's going to do, so you got to make sure that you're prepared for it. So, um, this week, we get to see something interesting in this, uh, this format, which is, on the DS, stalling out the time. 
Um, it's kind of um, a, it's a it's a weird topic to talk about. Um, just the Star Wars and the Time Wars, especially because you don't normally see that anywhere else. If you play on Pokemon Showdown, that's not really a problem. The games can go up to like 700 turns, but on DS, since there's an hour-long limit, sometimes games can end um, just end just because the timer. Um, this week it didn't really make an impact as Toronto was definitely going to win the game. There was nothing Atlanta could do, but it still went down to the timer. And that brings up some strategies from coaches. Are they actually going to abuse the timer? And it's sort of something that might be frowned upon, but also a strategy that could be used if they're down and they, they need to do something, just get in the lead and just stall out the time. It's, a, it's another strategy. If you play against people that you don't know online, they sometimes try that where they just they wait out a full minute just so the timer can go down and they can win. So, right. yeah, definitely that that's um, you know, it's like Dave said, it could be frowned upon. It's definitely not the most fun thing to watch by any means. But sometimes you have to do what you have to do if if you really uh, need to score a win and you have a lot more you have more Pokemon than your opponent and you have ways to stall them out where you won't lose too many Pokemon, then you know sometimes you have to do what you gotta do and stall them out for the win. If um, you know you don't believe in something like that, by all means, then just go out and, and battle until to determine who had the better team, who played better that day. But you know, sometimes when it really comes down to things, the numbers do matter and getting that win is important. So uh, the way the DS will give the uh, the coach with the more Pokemon left, or if the Pokemon total are tied, then it goes to HP. So the way the DS does that, it's definitely something to be cognizant about because it can definitely come into play in matches the way it did in um, the Toronto-Atlanta game. So, yeah, definitely a great point to bring up, Dave. We've actually yeah, seen um, people on other leagues such as the GBA or the uh, UCL actually take so long because they were on the DS. They took so long that they didn't pick a move and nothing happened for them. Like they just they waited out the minute and just didn't do anything because they were thinking. So um, on Showdown you have a little bit more of time. Also you have like a constant reminder popping up in the chat that you have to make a move. We also saw some chokes this week. Um, New York had a plus two Gyarados out on the field, plus two attack, plus two speed, and um, Portland brought in an Infernape. Now this Infernape actually had an Expert Belt. It wasn't Choice Scarf. It wasn't um, Focus Sash or anything like that. It had an Expert Belt, but um, New York switched out, not realizing that it was Expert Belt. And um, that might have actually cost him the game. As I said, Infernape got three kills, so uh, Portland did good in faking that the Infernape was some sort of variant to counter Gyarados. But I think New York should have should have at least gone for like some sort of attack to at least, if it was Focus Sash, just to break the Sash, because that would be a threat later on. Um, also, if he's not max max speed scarf, he couldn't outspeed. And um, max speed scarf in this uh, format isn't too um, uncommon, just because you can also counter team the opponent. So he might not have been having full speed because he might have wanted some HP to live certain attacks. So it was an interesting play on New York's part. If they stayed in, they would have won the game definitely. But unfortunately, they switched and um, Portland. That's what allowed Portland to win. Um, also, New England, like we said, made some misplays against San Antonio, unfortunately. So San Antonio got to pick up a really big win there. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think. I, I, I'm i curious to know what, um, going back to the Gyarados and Fernate play, I, I really I want to know what the Gyarados' EV spread was because if it was jolly and even close to max speed, that plus two would easily outspeed Inferni, even if it was Jolly Choice Scarf. So I, that that's um, that's kind of surprising to me that they switched out. Maybe you know sometimes when you get into the heat of the moment, you don't even uh, you try to do the math in your head, or or you just will expect that they have something that is going to uh, take you out. So sometimes you just kind of panic and and do things without totally thinking it through, because a um, 
a Mega Gyarados is, is really bulky. Was it normal or Mega? It was a normal Gyarados. Right, it was normal. I think, I don't remember if it was plus two, but it was bulky, or if it was plus one, but it was offensive, but it okay. definitely, it had a chance to outspeed. Okay, that makes it's sense. That's th- all I th- remember. I don't know the exact right. numbers, but... He had, right, he had a chance to outspeed, but it wasn't a 100% chance, which is why he switched out. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So, yeah, it's definitely important to be really cognizant of EV spreads and um, you know, know exactly whether you'll be able to outspeed certain things and, and not just because uh, games could boil down to that. But it, it could very well have been where the Gyarados was either only a plus one or it was bulky to where even at plus two it wouldn't be able to outspeed a Scarfed Infernape. So, yeah, definitely an interesting uh, turn of events in that game. So, this week, opening week, we actually saw some trades. Coaches just getting right down to business. Um, the Detroit Pincers and their coach, Ashley, decided to trade with um, Trevenant Forest and the Atlanta Braviaries. They, the trade was Ashley would get the Alamomola, Trevenant would get the Jirachi. Then Trevenant would give away a first round pick, and Ashley would give him his her third round pick. So it was a Jirachi for an Alamomola and a first round pick for a third round pick, which I think is an interesting trade. I think um, Trev didn't actually have to give away his first round pick. I don't think that was necessary. Right. Yeah, I I kind of agree. I mean, the first round picks are just so huge in this format. Yeah, sometimes coaches get a little bit too greedy and try to give away their draft picks to have something right now. Um, but I guess it, maybe it wasn't too bad a play, especially since Jirachi does fit his team well. It's yeah. just now he has um, two steel types that maybe Hone Edge, or I mean uh, Dewblade, might not necessarily be useful anymore. So I guess he could have found a trading aspect for that. Yeah, that's true. Um, the blade isn't the easiest. Uh, from my experience in playing league play, the blade isn't the easiest to bring to matches. I mean, its typing is great, but sometimes it just gets either worn down too easily or offensively it's too slow and doesn't have the power to break through certain teams and whatnot. So maybe he wanted Jirachi as a premier skill type and... and People overlook Jirachi's versatility sometimes. That thing can really, really pull off tons of sets with great coverage options, great defensive and support options, and just all around very good stats. So the Jirachi Almamola trade um, was definitely nice for Trev, but yeah, the whole losing a first round draft pick is also that could, that could come into play big time next season because first round draft picks are huge. Yeah, that can definitely get like um. Just a Pokemon that would just um, that Trev might have wanted that Ashley can pick up. Um, looking at the trade block, um, the Green Bay Palkias actually have in their roles to be filled. They have a Ghost type and also a Steel type, and they're up for trade as Halucha. So Ghost and Steel type is definitely Dublade exactly. So Trevenant Forest might actually want the Halucha, especially because he doesn't really have any strong fighting types on his team. There's nothing that's uh, a fighting type on his team. So, he could definitely have picked that up, because so, he, he has literally nothing that's a fighting type. That's a good point. I mean, Victini could learn Focus Blast and Brick Break. Mega Blastoise can learn um, Aura Sphere, and Azumarill can learn Super Power, and that's basically it for his fighting type attacks. Yeah, that's true. Uh, that's definitely true. So he's definitely lacking on fighting. Also, sort of lacking on flying. He does have Landorus T, but that doesn't really have any solid flying type attacks. Not at all. Um, and he also has Braviary, but I don't know. Maybe he has plans for Braviary. He might drop it for getting something in free agency. And um, speaking of free agency, there are a lot of free agents that are Pokemon that just basically never got picked by anybody, and are extremely solid Pokemon. There are some really good ones. Um, I'm seeing Magnezone, which could trap Pokemon because of its ability. Could get rid of Pokemon like Ferrothorn, 
be able to kill them with hidden power fire and um so somebody strategically if they're playing against cheese or somebody with the uh, scissor could just pick up magna zone last second in free agency and bring that to help them out um right are there any specific ones that catch your eye you're seeing magna zone uh magna zone can definitely fit certain teams incredibly well uh, you know, any any team with powerful Megas, like Mega Altaria, or Mega Diancy, things like that, Mega Metagross, um, can always uh, really be benefited by Magnazone. But um, some other ones that really stand out to me are... Um, Mandibuzz is nice in this format because it really has a, a really wide array of moves and whatnot, and it's bulky on both the physical and special side. I always like, um, when it comes to bulky Pokemon in this format, I like ones that can uh, be bulky on both sides of the spectrum because depending on what you might need to face your opponent, you could just change that up. And if you really don't need, for example, if you really uh, don't need a special wall and all you uh, all you have as a wall is Blissey, then you're kind of in trouble because it can't really wall things on the physical side too well. So that's where Amanda Buzz comes in and could definitely be a nice free agent pickup for someone because it's... Uh, very well versed. It's got great moves, good typing, and just incredible bulk. And another one that uh, definitely stands out to me is actually Blaziken. Blaziken, even though it can't run speed boost in this format, is is just so versatile. It's it's kind of like Infernape, despite being a lot slower. It's kind of like Infernape with more power. It just can run tons of different moves. It has a great move pool. Um, not terrible bulk and uh, decent speed. So with the right support, it really could tear up a lot of teams and fit a lot of teams as well because it could run so many sets. So I think that's definitely a Pokemon to keep uh, an eye out for in this type of format. Um, um, yeah, you yeah. can also, also, with Mandibuzz, you could run an offensive variant. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's something that we've seen before, which is... What's Mandibuzz's attack stat? Around 80? 85, I believe. 85? Um, it's not bad. It has a good move pool if it wants to be offensive. Yeah, I mean, T Talonflame's Brave, Brave Bird hits pretty hard, and uh, that thing's attack is only 81. So, And knockoff is really nice. I mean, stab knockoff is always fantastic. Yeah, and um, another, like... These weren't really one specific Pokemon that I noticed didn't get picked up. It was just, like... Sort of like maybe a combination, which I was looking at like rain. Rain was just definitely not affected at all. Um, even like sand, sand really wasn't like in anybody's minds to try to get possible like team members that can abuse weather. For example, Politoed, Kingdra, Kabutops, Ludicolo, and Toxicroak are five Pokemon that were just never picked. If somebody at least got like Politoed and maybe Kingdra. That's a really good combination right there. Um, Kabutops, obviously, can do work. Same with Ludicolo. Ludicolo can just be fat and rain to just sit there. Yep. Um, and it was just surprising that nobody even, like, attempted to even get something. Like, maybe drafting Kingdra first, and then trying to get Palatoad if nobody else picked it. And right. Ki so that they didn't get Palatoad, and then Kingdra got sniped, and then they literally had a useless frog. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, King Kingdra could do pretty well on its own, and yeah, no, it's the thing about weather is, uh, I remember watching the GBA Mega Mogwai having um, Hippowdon plus Stoutland was really something that people had to prepare for every game just because that's so deadly. If you could just switch in uh, your Hippowdon and keep the sand up for five to eight turns and allow a Choice Bandit or a Light Orb, Stoutland or what any other type of weather sweeper come in. With good coverage and boosted power, it's just so dangerous, especially with rain. Things like Kingdra and Kabutops getting to boost their stabs and Hydro Pump and Waterfall, respectively. Um, it's really scary and something that should definitely be uh, prepped for for every game. So that's definitely a great point to point out that th none of those things were picked. So definitely very interesting. Um, as you said... Uh, Stoutland was a threat, and it didn't get actually. It actually didn't get picked. It's still up in free agency, and there are a couple of teams that I was looking at could potentially get Stoutland. Like um, 
the New York Metangs. Obviously, they don't have Hepaudon or Tyranitar, but um, a set that I was actually looking at was um, actually if they got Sand on their Crocodile, they could actually run Sandstorm on their Crocodile. It was a set that I um I mentioned to him that I came up with that I mentioned to him and that I like I tried out with him, and it's a good set Crocodile with Sandstorm. It catches people off guard off guard. Um, plus they also have Excadrill, which is another Pokemon that can, it's a definitely another Pokemon that can abuse the sand, definitely, and, um, Stoutland, they have a Dunsparce, so it's not like they don't have room. I mean, they have a Dunsparce. Right. I don't think there's much else that needs to be said. Right. Right, definitely. Oakland could also get, T. um, no, excuse me, they can also get something along those lines, um, because they have Tyranitar, and they have a vanilla ice cream cone. <laughs> so, I don't know if they really need Vanillux, but if they have right. a T-Tar, they definitely can afford having Stoutland on their team. Um, Absolutely. Portland also has a Powdon, but looking at their team, I don't know if there's much that they want to drop to be able to get Stoutland, just because their team is so solid, and their three... Pokemon that can they can drop is Crobat, Zoroark, and Magneton. I mean, they can always drop Magneton because there's also Magnezone, so if one of them gets sniped from him, gets taken away from him, there's always the other one. Right. Yeah, that, that's that's uh, a good point. But having um, Magneton for Mega Pinsir is just phenomenal. Yeah, it is. He definitely... He made a good play in that. It's just... Uh, it's weird seeing a hippo, and then there's a Stoutland in free agency that's just doing nothing. I know that uh, that definitely that definitely is true. Speaking of the vanilla ice cream cone that I was talking about earlier, there's also Jinx and Obama Snow, which were never got picked. Huh? That, yeah, that is pretty surprising. They are, they are a very <laughs> sneaky Pokemon that can fulfill uh, a few different roles and do them all pretty well, and the ice typing really is so good offensively these days. People just don't prepare for it too much because there aren't so that many common, uh, very good ice types, but yeah, those are definitely two uh, pretty strong picks if anyone is, is looking for a powerful ice type, grass type, psychic type, whatever whatever you're looking for that has that have good move pools. I believe Frostlass wasn't even picked either, which is another ice type, which can also set up hazards, so it has more uses than Vanillux, definitely. Right. Yep, that is true. Um, Process is very good. That's really it for the Pokemon that I that caught my eye this week in free agency. Definitely free agency is something we have to constantly, constantly be looking at. Same with the coaches. They definitely have to keep an eye on free agency, but um, that's really all I noticed right now. Is there anything else you'd like to add on that subject? Um... You know, I, I'm not sure. I mean, there really, there's just so many, there's just so many strong and viable Pokemon in this format that are still here for free agents. So, um, I guess not too many that jump out to me and say, "How could this possibly not get picked?" But definitely some things like Haxorus, um, Cuffagrigus, Blaziken, Frostlass, even Chandelure and Machamp could are just easy to slap on teams for the most part. Um, definitely a lot, of, a lot of things for coaches to look out for. Yeah, and yeah. Um, so, so I think we're going to wrap up by looking at the matchups for next week. We're going to be seeing Trevenant and um, Togavor, which is Atlanta and Portland. That should be an exciting match. That's two really good players, two really solid players. Um, obviously, there's Infernape in there, which is a huge threat. We could also finally see Azumarill come in. Um... After that, we're going to be seeing New England and Toronto. Um, unfortunate for New England to be facing uh, another powerful team right off the bat. They definitely don't want to get into like a hole that they have to dig themselves out of. So maybe we could see some upset and he completely redeems himself. Or we could also see just a very close game. Um, Jolt definitely has the advantage team-wise, but New England has some threats that J Jolt can't just bring any Pokemon and expect to win, so that's another exciting thing. Um, we might see debuts from Green Bay and Chicago this week if they actually have the time to be able to finish their battles. Um, 
it's going to be interesting to see how Detroit can try to bounce back from a loss, especially from a team that's doing really good. Right. Such as San Antonio, they definitely got they're definitely on a roll with the way they're yep. playing. Same with Oakland. So Phoenix and Oakland are two teams. They both picked up a win. They're going to try to see how who who can stay undefeated undefeated here. Right. Definitely. Looking at definitely this matchup, good. there's going to be at least one person undefeated, but the, who knows there could be, you know, Togavor can continue to win. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, no, de- definitely. It's, this week is going to be very exciting. As the weeks go on, it's always to see. It's always nice to see or fun to watch uh, teams that are undefeated. And when every new week comes, always you always get excited to see whether they're going to win or lose and be able to keep the streak alive. So for those undefeated coaches, uh, good luck. Do your best to keep the streak alive, and good luck to all the coaches. This is going to be an exciting week for sure. I like some of these matchups. Okay, so um, is, is there any last points that you want to hit or anything else you want to talk about? Um, I think that's just about it. I, I definitely enjoyed going over the weekly recap. There's so much that goes into uh, the NPL, and it really, it really is awesome, and I'm really looking forward to this week's matches and as I really enjoyed this past week's matches. So good luck to all the coaches. Thanks for having me on here, Dave. Thank you for being here. It was it was fun to have you, and um, hopefully next week will be just exciting as this week. So um, thank you all so much for watching. Subscribe to everybody in the NPL. Subscribe to the NPL channel. Be sure to check out me and Maddie's channels. You can check me out at Dave Fernape and him at Maddie Brolic. And um, thank you for watching.